Hello 12, uh, welcome to another flip video. Uh, right, well, um, this is an interesting uh, dot point today. Uh, you are going to be performing an investigation. Um, so there are some technical skills to play here, and it's about using a light microscope to look at uh, prepared slides of blood to estimate the size of a red and white blood cell. And then you're going to draw some diagrams of each of them. Alright, let's look at our uh, dot point. Again, this is one of the one of the ones that we associate with a skill. So we've got performing the investigation, so that involves a whole bunch of safety aspects, whether or not you're using equipment technically right. Um, you know, just general lab stuff. And then we have uh, estimate. So estimate is a mathematical concept, so we are going to um, use a technique to estimate uh, the size of our red and white blood cells. And then we are going to hone in on another skill, which is drawing scale diagrams. Uh, so it's a big, big uh, video today, um, but uh, I think you're going to like it. All right. So uh, again, with these uh, these S uh, parts of the syllabus, the skill building parts, uh, you know, you really um, uh, are building your capacity as a person to be employed. So uh, not only do you, will you have a thorough grounding in the use of proper uh, technical equipment um, in a safe manner, you'll be able to problem solve, and drawing biological diagrams you know, is, uh, is a valuable thing. You can go into lots of different fields where you're required to draw what you see. So, when you get employed, have you got the skills? <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. All right, let's Okay. <laughs> So, uh, today, the big formula that we need to uh, remember is this one. So, we have, uh, oh, we'll start over here. We'll have, um, I put estimated over here because technically, if you did this perfectly, uh, cell size would equal the field of view and the number of cells that fit across the diameter. But life is never really that friendly to us. And so, we have to say it's an estimated cell size because we put some sort of, um, measure of error in here where this word forgives a whole manner of sins okay so estimated is a is a is a nice word to put in here um, for our formula so we get an estimated cell size equals the field of view over estimated number of cells that fit across that diameter all right so um, you've actually got to understand what it is you're looking at when you are looking down your eyepiece and through the objective lens. So um, these are the settings that we're most likely going to encounter in the lab. So I'm going to go through a few of them, and uh, I, I, I'm going to say like maybe these are worth just jotting down on the side of a, a piece of paper or, or in your summary notes or something. Just um, uh, because I'm not going to teach these to you again, you're just going to be assumed to know these things, alright? So this is your one time only. Alright, so at 40 times magnification, uh, we are going to get a field of view of roughly 3.8 millimeters, or 3,800 micron, or micrometers. So the way that this was uh, determined was that if we get a mini grid, which is a special uh, slide that has a, uh, a, a big grid on it that's got millimeter increments and then in this tiny little point one of a millimeter increment over here um, and we look at it we can easily just determine that we have one two three and then a half and then point three there so we have three point eight all right so as we zoom in we increase our magnification to a hundred this is what our mini grid looks like in our field of view remember our field of view is just kind of a a lateral line across our middle section so we have, uh, at 100 magnification, we have about 1.6 millimetres, or 1,600 micron. Now, it's probably, at, this, at these magnifications, it's probably easier to refer to it in these units rather than these units. Um, but, uh, as you'll come to realise later on, um, because blood cells are so small, we want to um, refer to the smaller unit. And finally, uh, now this is the tough one. This is where your kind of skills as a biologist come into play. Getting something to focus in a lab, uh, particularly with older equipment, is quite difficult at 400 times. So um, we've got three uh, spiffy new microscopes, which are lovely, and we'll be using them fully 
Uh, but it would be handy to see whether or not you can actually get one of the older microscopes to, if, the, if it says it can't get to 400 magnification, see if you can get it across here. So uh, what we're looking at here is these little um, small squares here, and it, there's only four of them. So we have roughly uh, 0.4 of a millimeter of a view, which means that our view here is 400 micron. Okay, that's a, that's a pretty big field of view. Um, so, uh, we're going to go, I'm going to run you through a practice run with how you would use this formula. So now that you understand what your field of view is, you need to, uh, if you're looking at a, down an eyepiece of a microscope, you need to be making sure you're very aware of what your magnification is. So in this example, um, these are my fake cells that I'm seeing down through my eyepiece and they're, they, um, uh, at 400 times, they look quite big. And so, uh... I need to calculate the number that would fit across here. And so because I've got some spaces here, I actually just kind of need to use my imagination. And this is where the, your imagination um, plays an impact on error. So let's have a look at how I imagined some s imaginary orange cells to fit in there. And I went, all right, well, look, this one, this one, and this one. And this one's kind of tilted a bit weird. And this one's tilted a bit weird down here. And I reckon if they were all kind of flat and lining up, I reckon I've got five. All right, so I've got five cells across my field of view. So if I substitute these into my formula, it looks like this. I have 400 micron across my field of view. And I have five. And that makes 80 micron. Woo-woo. All right. Sounds straightforward, yes? Haha! <laughs> well, this is what blood looks like. Um, no point in kind of hiding this from you, you know, that's not, an, that's not part of the, uh, the game today. Um, so, they are bloody small. Um, some of the smallest cells in your body, and so your estimates are going to be far smaller than 80 micron. Um, so, when you are doing the maths of this, um, you'll wanna, probably want to verify with a couple of different people that you are all getting the similar types of estimates um, and don't forget that personal error that you place into your estimates um, will play a factor in the results that you get. Um, we also have to look for not only these red uh, blood cells all over here but we have to look for our white blood cells here. Now um, those are extremely rare, uh, you get one for about every thousand of these red ones so you'll actually have to move your slide around in order to locate one of these. Um, that's important uh, mainly because we want to be able to not only judge its size, and the best way to do that is to judge it against a red blood cell, uh, but then you also want to be able to make a drawing of it, so um, that's, a, that's a pretty important process to do, go through. Um, so, uh, you're going to whip out your phones or camera or whatever you're going to use today um, in order to take a photo of, the, of red blood cells at the highest possible magnification that you can find it. Now, if it's in the lab and that's 400, micro, uh, 400 magnification, that's fantastic. Um, there is one microscope in there that I believe can find it at 1,000. And if I get that, we'll have a look and we'll see what we can uh, uh, make of it. All right. So, um, we're getting on to the kind of back part of this uh, dot point. You need to be able to um, make some biological drawings. And so there are some general principles here of which... Um, you know, these aren't kind of like study notes for you, they're just kind of guidelines, the things that you kind of should should do. Um, and the only issue I have with this set of kind of principles here is this first one here, um, in the HSC, you're actually required to use a pen, which basically, you know, the, some, some random administrative uh, decision was decided for that, so uh, it made all the science teachers and scientists just cry out in pain. Uh, but um, you have to use a pen because when they scan your exam, pencil sometimes doesn't scan well. So uh, that sucks, but that's just how it is. So uh, use clear continuous lines. So no kind of like sketching. Um, sketching kind of is a is a big no no. It's, you know, it's not an art class. You're you're trying to use clear continuous lines, and that means if you have to do your diagram over and over, do it. Um, you, you know, you just. You can't just uh, get away with um, you know some very roughhouse sketch strokes. 
Alright, so you don't use any sh form of shading. Now, this is a really tough one for students to get their head around. Um, you use dots, extra dots, lots of dense dots indicates shading or darker areas. So use dots rather than um, hatching or, or any like shading with the side of a pencil. Um, accuracy par is paramount, I mean that's kind of a no-brainer, but what this is trying to allude to is uh, that you are drawing what you see, not drawing what you think you want us, uh, that you think we want you to see. You know, like it's, it's literally what did you see, what does it look like, and that's that's a skill to develop, so you may not nail it in this uh, example here, but um, we'll have a go. Uh, so, guidelines. So, this kind of is in, uh, in assistance to this one up here. Um, you can use light lines, uh, and light lines can be erased, and then once you feel like you're comfortable with those light lines, you can go over it with a clear, continuous line, a, a firmer, firmer stroke. Um, you also need to ensure that you understand what magnification you are drawing at, um, and whether or not uh, you had... Um, a particular illumination. Now that becomes uh, that's that's a rule for a lot more complex diagrams. So I don't think we're going to need to worry about that for this one. Um, don't be a tight ass with paper. Um, if it takes you half a page to draw it, do it. If you are only going to draw it in the middle of a page, uh, you'll have room for labels around it. So don't draw top corners or bottom corners. New page, bang it in the middle, put a heading at the top that's nice and big, and uh, you know make it make it. Nice. Um, correct mistakes. This basically means uh, that you'll want an eraser. Now, this kind of when we're talking about using a pen um, in the exam, it sucks. But you, you probably really want to start a new diagram again, which means asking for extra paper and putting the name of the question up the top. Um, so, if you ruin a pen diagram, uh, you'll want to do the diagram again. Uh, make sure you include a title and including a scale. Now, a scale is something that um, we will uh, uh, help you with in class. I think that's something that kind of we really need to kind of um, ensure that uh, we get that done in class. I'll teach everyone how to do that. Over here, on a little side side note, um, we have labels. Now, labels should be relevant structures only, and that's like a good judgment call. Um, you need to use a ruler for label lines, and um, imagine them like you know this is a list of dot points here. Imagine your labels being a list of dot points like this, and then the lines going off to where they need to be. Your label should be neat, uh, which is um, uh, important, and uh, the lines that they go to um, need to be exactly at the feature that you are labeling. Um, I'll I'll show you some examples now. So um, this is uh, a slightly blurry, sorry, uh, picture of a uh, monocot root, a cross section of it, and um, you can see the black lines are all uh, pointing. There's no arrows; they're all pointing to a particular feature. Um, so uh, I want to show you how a biological diagram can be good of this particular. Um, cross section and how it can be bad. So here is a bad biological drawing and uh, you know if this was um, to be fair I reckon I've done a couple of these on the board before just because drawing with a whiteboard marker sucks. So uh, look you have a look at this you know like you've drawn this kind of like outer casing and there's kind of like there's, there's no such thing there and we've got these kind of loose circles that just kind of like cross over each other and you've got weird gaps in between and you've got weird labels where they're kind of you know they've, they've clearly seen a label on a slide and they've kind of gone oh, alright well then you know here the, here we have uh, you know PC I guess that's parenchyma cells and then uh, epidermal layers um, the bulk of the root mass is sent it pointing to the center of a cell uh, the root hair cell is pointing to something that's not actually there uh, you've got a, a scale up in the corner here. This says 150 micron, um, but you know no line to help me judge. You know exactly how far that is. Um, some of it's done in pen. The title's done in pen. Like it's all over the place. So uh, this is an example of a bad one, and um, you need to be prepared for the feedback that if you drew something as um, kind of poor at a senior level like this, um, I'll ask you to redo it. 
Alright, so this is a good drawing. Um, as you can see, the uh, everything is written nice and neatly. You can kind of see what is going on here. Uh, the uh, label lines are going exactly to the section that they need to. Um, we have a scale. Uh, I'd probably prefer this unit of measurement in here, but um, that's a slight omission. That's fine. Uh, there isn't a... Um, a magnification, uh, which you know I, I might have liked to have seen, but these are very small uh, things that can be fixed. Overall, the biological diagram is sound. Uh, you'll notice that there's no shading; there's just extra dots here. So, uh, hopefully, you've um, got some uh, skills that you uh, want to share with the class. Your drawing skills, um, and uh, you know, uh, I'll see you in the lab. Get your game on. Says.